Hey guys, so this video is about geometric sequences. Um, the problems are really similar to what we saw in 11.2, but now it's a different kind of sequence with different formulas. Um, but the problem styles are, are similar. And so this one, we also have an nth term. And I wrote it bigger, but I didn't write my n very good. So this is a sub n equals a sub 1 r. And what r is going to be is a common ratio this time instead of a common difference. And then n minus 1 and a sub 1 is still the first term. And then the common ratio, I'll show you what that looks like down here in this example. So determine if the following sequence is geometric. If it is, identify the common ratio. So for arithmetic, we have common differences. For geometric, we have common ratios. So to find a common ratio, I just do the ratio of the first two terms. So I do the second term, and I can pick any two terms to do this with. Um, but we pick the second one over the first one, essentially. So for the a sub, actually let me write that better, um, a sub 2 over a sub 1, the ratio would be 12 over 10, or 6 over 5. And I find the ratio of the next two terms. So a sub 3 over a sub 2, that ratio is 14 over 12, or 7, 6. So these are not the same, so it doesn't have a common ratio. Um, actually, this one has a common difference. It's counting up by 2, so it would be arithmetic. But for this section, we would just say, it's um, no, it's not geometric. So same thing here. So the second term over the first term is going to give me 4 over negative 1, or negative 4. The third term over the second term is negative 16 over 4. And that's going to be negative 4 again. And then you can see 64 divided by negative 16, negative 4. So this is our common ratio R. So here we'd say yes, this one is geometric. So example two, um, given a sub one is four and the ratio is one half, find the nth term and the ninth term. So very much like the um, example we did back in 11.2, but now we're using um, this other formula because it's geometric. So the common, um, the nth term formula is gonna be a sub n equals the first term a sub 1 times the ratio 1 half to the n minus 1. And this is nth term, so I'm just leaving it as n and minus 1. And then to find, I can use this now to find any term. So if I want to find the ninth term, that would be 4 1 half n minus 1, so 9 minus 1. So this will go 4 and then one half to the eighth. So you can see these ones are um, going to be exponentials. And a sub n is one half to the eighth um, under four. So two to the eighth. And if we clean that up a little bit, um, if you want to be fancy about how you clean it up, because they want the fraction, they don't want a decimal here, you can think of it as two squared over two to the eighth which means it's going to reduce to 1 over 2 to the 6th, and 1 over 2 to the 6th is 1 64th. You could also make this a 4 and this uh, whatever that is and divide 4 and then get 64. I think it's 256. Okay, so this is um, this one's kind of involved, kind of like the second one was in, in the 11-2. Um, so we're supposed to find the common ratio, and these are three three apart so I can't just and they're not increasing linearly so I can't just kind of do the slope like I did last time um, for this I'm gonna set up let me write down what we're plugging into make it easier to follow so there's our nth term formula and we're given these two terms so I'm gonna plug this one in and see where that gets me so I know the output is the 135, that's the fourth term. And a sub one is what I'm trying to figure, or actually no, I don't know a sub one. I don't know the ratio. But I do know I get this when n is four. So that would be four minus one or three right there. Um, this I could solve and I think I'm going to, um, because of the, where the R is locked up in here, I think I'm going to solve this for a sub 1. 
So I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 over r cubed, 1 over r cubed, and I'm going to isolate this a sub 1, and then I'm going to do a substitution here in a second. So this side will look like, if I make it look a little bit nicer, 1 over 135 r cubed equals, um, these cancel, a sub 1. So then if I set this um, second term up the same way, I would have um, negative 1 over 3, 6, 4, 5 equals um, a sub 1. But now I have this expression for a sub 1 that I can put here. Because the trouble back here, right, I have two unknowns. So I need to make two equations and do some sort of substitution to get it down to one equation with one unknown. So I'm going to plug this in for the a sub 1. And then that's going to be r, and then this is the seventh term, so r to the 7 minus 1. So cleaning this up a little bit. So 135 there. And this is r cubed. And this is up here now times r to the 6th. So I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to multiply both sides by 135. That's going to cancel that fraction. And so um, that makes this look like negative 135 over 360 or 3,645. And on this side, those cancel. And what I have, um, let me write it out and I'll show the cancel all together in one step. So now I have r6 up top and r cubed down below. So if I go 135 into 3645, I'm going to find that goes 27 times. So this is 127th. And 6 up and 3 down leaves me r cubed. So then I can do a cube root on both sides. And I get negative 1 third equals r. And that's what I want was my common ratio. OK, so then we get to the sums. Um, so finding the sum of a geometric sequence, uh, the sum of the first n terms, so if it's finite, is given by this formula here, and I'll write that a little bit bigger, s sub n, a sub 1, r n minus 1, over r minus 1. Um, and then the sum of an infinite geometric sequence to so the first term a sub 1 and common ratio r is given by this one, so the sum, there's no subscript on this because it's infinite, um, equals a sub 1 over 1 minus r. Uh, I'm going to take just a second and kind of talk about how it's a strange idea that you can add an infinite number of things and it comes up to something finite. Um, I'm going to do just a quick little geometric example of that and some scratch paper over here. So if we think of the, uh, the sum 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth on out to infinity, um, this actually adds up to 1. If you keep adding these numbers forever, it'll make a 1. And here's sort of a geometric way of thinking of it. If I think of this square as one unit, if I'm adding a half, that would be a half of the square. And if I'm adding a fourth, that would be a fourth of the square. And then I add an eighth of the square and a sixteenth. So you can see what's going to happen. I'm just getting closer and closer to 1, and this is just going to keep cutting um, these things in half. I'm never going to get to one. It's going to approach it as we fill in this last little corner. Um, but that's an example of how you can add an infinite number of numbers and come up with something finite. <coughs> so back to number four proper. Given the geometric sequence, this, uh, find the eighth term and the sum through the first eight terms. And so remember our formula for the nth term is this. And so we're given the first term, I can find the common ratio. 
um, pretty easily. The first term is a sub 1 is negative 5, and the ratio is going to be 15 over negative 5, where the ratio is negative 3. And then I can just plug right in here, and that's going to give me, um, and then also I know, sorry, n is 8. Um, so to find the eighth term, I would have a sub 8 equals the first term, which is the negative 5. Um, the ratio, which is negative 3, raised to the n minus 1, so 8 minus 1. And so calculating that, uh, this would be negative 3 to the 7th, and then times negative 5, and that comes out to um, 10,935. And if I'm supposed to find the sum through the first eight terms, I have two sum formulas this time. I have one through n terms and one that's infinite. So these are easy, even easier to tell apart just because it's telling we want the eighth term, so I have to use the n term one. So that's this one I have written up right here. So the sum through eight terms is the first term, which is negative 5, and then the ratio, which is negative 3 raised to the 8 minus 1 over r minus 1. So um, the ratio is negative 3 minus 1. And then there's just a bunch of cleaning this up. So negative 5, negative 3 to the 8th minus 1 comes out 65, 60 it looks like, over negative 4. And I just threw that in a calculator. So the sum through the first eight terms is Oops, 8,200. Question 5, a sub 1 is negative 8, r is negative 1, find the sum through 18 terms. So again, I'm just going to copy down what I had here. And so this is going to be the 18th sum through the 18 terms. And a very plug and chug on this one. Um, r our ratio is negative 1 to the 18 minus 1 and over negative 1 ratio minus 1. And so what this thing is going to do is negative 1 to the 18th would be 1. So this becomes negative 8 and then 1 minus 1 over negative 2, but that's 0. So this is one where the terms kind of flip back and forth and um, cancel one another out. So this is going to be the sum through 18 is 0. And then this last one is finding the sum of an infinite geometric sequence. So let me copy that formula here. So the sum, no n because it's infinite, a sub 1, 1 minus r. So I need the first term, which I have, which is 2, but I also need the common ratio. So I'll do negative 4 thirds divided by 2. I can think of that as 2 over 1 if I want. So that's negative 4 thirds divided by 2 over 1, or times 1 over 2. And that goes in twice, so it should be negative 2 thirds is my ratio. And now I just plug into here. So the infinite sum for this one is going to be the first term, which is 2 over 1 minus negative 2 thirds. So that will be 2, 1 minus negative 2 thirds is 1 plus 2 thirds. And I'll think of this as 3 over 3. So 3 plus 2 would make 5 thirds. And 2 divided by 5 thirds, that's kind of what I did up here, I'll just show it this time, is 2 times 3 over 5. So that means my sum to infinity will be 6 fifths. So it will approach 6 fifths as I add more and more terms on.